Hello and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper and today we have to do a quick suspension repair on a really old car. Behind me you see the oldest car in my stable. This is a 1940 Chevy Special Deluxe that everybody calls the Madam. Now this car wasn't actually a car I was going out to purchase. I was haggling for this car on behalf of someone else who ended up falling through as a buyer and it was such a good deal by the time I was done, I had to pick it up. Now, this car was obviously a hot rod project put together by someone in their garage who didn't have the right tools and didn't have the knowledge to do it properly, but overall it looks really good and the bones are fairly solid. There's almost no rust that I can find on the car. Now, the only problem with this is the wiring is absolute mess. The suspension is horribly set up and in general the parts used for a lot of the various little replacement bits that the person used were really cheap quality. So I was planning this winter to go through and clean the whole car up, properly wire it, fix everything, and get it really driving well for next year. Unfortunately, on one of the shorter trips we took the car out on, the suspension mount for the air shock decided to break off. So I need to get the car in the air and find out what happened and if I can fix it. So here is the risk in backyard mechanics not really wanting to put much effort in. So this here is what broke. This is the bracket that mounted the bottom end of the air shock to this plate under the leaf spring. Now if you look at it, you can see really ugly globby welds with a few shiny places. The shiny places correspond to shiny places over here where it was originally welded, and that's the only pieces of the weld that were actually holding on when it broke. So it has globs and globs of weld, but none of it was hot enough to actually adhere it to this plate that they were attempting to weld to. So that flexed apart, broke after however much miles were on this car, the shock came down, ruined the U-bolt threads, that kind of thing, smashed the hardware into the road, so now this hardware needs to be replaced. And hopefully didn't do too much other damage. I haven't really found anything else, but that doesn't mean it didn't screw something up or bend something. Now, this stuff is going to be fairly easy to fix, but I don't really have time to do this the way I would prefer to, which is make this all one piece and gusset it and replace both of them. If you look, this side is still holding together, but it still has the same hokey, kind of bird crap looking weld on it. So it's probably going to have a problem. But right now I'm supposed to be getting the Mustang ready to go to SEMA. So instead, since my road trip is coming up way sooner than this car needs to move, what I'm going to do is just try to grind this down and lay a good heavy weld on it and weld this crappy piece back on there so that the car can at least be driven around at low speeds and then I can get it out of here and get back to work on the Mustang. So let's see if I can get this fixed or if I just need to tear all this out and do it the right way. With an angle grinder and a little finesse, I was able to turn this nut back into something I could actually get a socket on. I was able to pull what's left of the bracket off. So you can see here how bad the welds were. They barely were connected to anything. They were just mounded on top. So now that I have this loose, what I really need to do is take this plate loose too and grind it all down because I don't think I'm going to be able to clean this up and get enough of a weld from one side just because of how thick it is. And even though this is temporary, I still want it to be better quality than the last guy did. So let's go ahead and get this off the car.
Yeah, it's even louder in here than it was before now that I've got the vent going so that I don't die of all the fumes from trying to weld this thing. Um, the weld turned out okay. It's definitely a lot better than the weld that was on there before, but it's, uh, it's nowhere near what I was hoping for. My little 211 wasn't cooperating. It kept getting really upset when I had the power and feed turned up higher. So I had to do this uh, a little bit, a little bit wonky, but it actually uh, seems to have worked okay. So I'm going to stress test this with a hammer and get it all shaped up and stuff, see if it cracks or anything. And if everything looks good, I'm gonna hit it with some paint and then mock it back up on the car. So here's the plate installed again. As you can tell, I painted it up after I welded the ear back on. I actually cut the ear back off and adjusted it. I had welded it flush with the side of the bracket and it actually needed to come in a little bit to clear the spring. So now it's back to about where it was originally, but that's still not a very good design. I think what I want to do is make a whole new bracket or a plate here that has the bracket integrated in so that I can just go ahead and move everything inboard a little bit. Overall, it works. It should be able to go down on the ground here in a second. This gusset I added on the back here, if you can see it, should give it a little bit more strength so it doesn't try to flex and move. And being painted should help buy some time before it actually corrodes through the welds. I had to piece together some hardware for it real quick because the original hardware basically had no threads left to it. it the nut just torqued right off the end of it. So this is what should be inside the bushing, but as you can tell, it's super pitted and rusted, so no big loss. People like to reuse old hardware for some reason, but they really shouldn't. This stuff, for nostalgia's sake, is just a safety hazard. You should buy new hardware if you can for a lot of things. But this will work for right now, and then I'll order some actual proper shaped and sized ones later. So let's go ahead and get it on the ground and see if it breaks. So the car's back on the ground. The mount seems to be working. As you saw, I had to do some adjustments and recut it. The welder was at the absolute limit of what it was actually capable of welding, but it did penetrate from both sides all the way to the center. So it's working. The gusset is gonna help a lot. Ultimately, what needs to happen is both those plates need to be remade with those being just a part of the plate from the get-go and not a welded on tab. But I'm gonna to wait to do that until I overhaul the rest of the suspension because those air shocks need to go anyway. I need to go ahead and look at those leaf springs. All the bushings need to be replaced and there's something wrong with the brakes. So I need to get under this car and do a lot of work this winter anyway. If you have any questions about how you too can butcher a weld horribly, leave them in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.